Pardon me. I think I gotta follow the doctor's orders and do some wood turning. <coughs> That's what it feels like. I'm Cat Nutty Castler. Welcome to my shop. We're gonna get geared up today and do a little pretty project. A little bit of project, but it's a project. It's something we can do. Here's the deal. Last year, while I had some really nice guys trimming up the trees in our yard, he brought me this burl. Now this burl was 36 inches across and 13 inches deep, 14 inches deep. And it was beautiful. It was oak. At least they guess it was oak. Because it's hard to tell the burl sometimes. But he brought me this burl because I showed him one of my cowboy hats. Oh. And he said, wow, I'd like to have something made out of the burl. I can't make the hat out of the burl because it wasn't the right size. But I called a friend and said, hey, can you come get this burl and turn it? Because he does big work. Sure, I didn't know he wasn't well, but he couldn't come get it. Six months later, Ronnie was here for a class. And I talked about the burl. About a month later, Ronnie was back. We talked about the burl. A couple of days later, he says, hey, if you really, really want to get rid of that burl, really, really want to get rid of it, give it to me. I did. You gotta see what's happening. You got to. I want to suit up. You watch. When I said I'm going to suit up, there's a couple of things you have to acknowledge and agree on when you come to work in the shop. Number one, you have to take care of the right safety thing. There's no blings, no rings, no jewelry, no watches, no chains. Um, I even took the gold out of my teeth. But I have no blink, nothing to get caught. Because you only get 10 of these. That's what God allows. And if you tear them all up, you don't get any more. So let's take care of yourself. Speaking of rings, I just made a deal with Bill Toops out of Baton Rouge Plaquemines, Louisiana. He's from Plaquemines, out of Baton Rouge. We're going to do some rings using those craft supplies, ring inserts. We're going to have a little fun with it. Might be a challenge between him and I see what we come up with. But it ain't much of a challenge, you see. Bill's got a chunk of power Kingwood. I haven't had one of those since Gorse was around. So I'm kind of looking for some really, really, really exotic piece of wood to do a pen blank out of. Yeah, I am. But I'm suiting up. What am I doing? I'm going to the shield. Now this is my Uvex Bionics shield. Remember a couple of weeks ago we did one and I ended up with a black stripe across my head because the sweat band was dirty. So I got smart. I'm bringing it inside and sneaking into the washer. Well, the lady that runs the washer, she runs everything else. She threw it out. I threw it back. She threw it out. I threw it back. Um, I finally got it clean. I got it put back in. So the sweat band is now clean and the hat will fit right and I won't end up that big black stripe across my head. That's number one. Number two is, I wear safety glasses. Now even if I'm not cutting wood, and I've still got something moving on the lathe, or the saw, or the drill press, I still go to my safety glasses. I cheated a couple years ago, I went to Sam's Wholesale Club, and I got these, I got two pair of them. They were about $50, $55. Can't find that paperwork on them anymore to tell you if that's the same price. But they're really good got side protection, some sweat protection, and they, they are to my prescription. So we're going to get into that. Now, to turn this piece, I've sawn this bar barrel down, knocked off the corners, and trust me, see all these drops? They won't go anywhere. I'm having brain farts right now about what I can turn out of these. And I can slice them up and make disc out of them and put them on the ornamental lathe. Um, I can put them on a disc and turn them into a, a, a medallion on my one way uh, or my uh, 1014 jet engine lathe. Um, there's a lot of possibilities for scrap wood. It's never left over. Today I drill the hole. This comes, I'm going to do this with a bottle stopper. And here's real quick. You know, you get out of shop and you come back and you know you got things. I have a pack of 10 or 20 bottle stoppers from Ruth Niles. Dear sweet lady. Ruth Niles. This address. Ruth Niles. 
She got bottle stoppers made by one of the best machinists in the world. Now I can talk about Paul Holmes that way. Um, and she's got all these stoppers and all the parts and pieces and pendants and all that. Check out Ruth. Give her a call. And look, when you do, tell her that they go to New Orleans. Eddie Castle and sent you. It helps. I don't want her. All right. But that bottle stopper will screw into a block of wood. Now, in a Ruth Niles package I got, she provided me with a drill bit for drilling the. I'm gonna get something to get that out to drill to put that that insert in. So that's gonna be the one I'm turning off of. Hold on. You didn't have to hold very long, right? Now I've got the insert out and I'll put that back in the stopper. Because it comes with a 3 8 18 thread on it. I guess that's 3 8 18. But that's what threads into the piece. And that threads into the wood. It's a nifty, it's a nifty connect, connection. When I did bottle stoppers for gifts, and I did a lot of bottle stoppers. And I don't know if you know the Dago Creed. Never close the bottle, finish it. But I gave them to all kinds of other folks. Um, when I did stoppers, I would normally do the 3 8 inch hardwood dowel and the cork insert or the rubber insert to go over the top of it. Because you're talking about 20 cents, 30 cents. And you can do a stopper, junk wood, not junk wood, open your odds. And you can sell them on your craft table or give them to friends. I used to keep them in the glove box of the car all the time. Excuse me. And I remember a policeman, a friend of mine, riding with me and he opened my glove box and he says, Oh my God, look how much do you drink? I said, I don't drink at all, but it's, yeah, it's part of the system. But I would give them away that way. But this time I'm going to hold it with something. This is a multi-staged center. Now this is sold for doing chain poles on lights and ceiling fans. That's a nifty project. Turn a, turn a different fob for every one of your ceiling fans. But it's going to fit in this 3 8 inch hole and load with bond binding when I bind it. And then I'm going to be able to spin this thing and control it. It's a nifty idea. It's a simple way to do it. If you don't have this and you have this, you can always use the 3 8 inch bolt, cut the head off and hold it in your grip in your grip jaws. I don't recommend holding him in a Jacob's jaw, a Jacob's chuck. A little bit of wobble in that, okay? But I'm gonna get this set, we're gonna move the camera, move you, and get going. Bottle stopper sticking out of a counter. Then I realized this bottle stopper is on a mandrel made by Ruth Niles just for turning. It's got the 3 8 insert in it right there. So if I put this in my tailstock and I screw my wood onto it, that's positive connection. But brain just had a little damage, okay? As we get started, this is the man draw I told you about. It's number two Morse taper. It's got a one quarter twenty tap in the end of it. Why? That's for the draw bar. The draw bar screws into that through the headstock and pulls it tight. Why do I want that? Because I'm putting this in and it's a Morse taper. Could be some vibration. I'm putting the draw bar through the headstock. It's a simple fix. Now, the draw bar is now picking up the load on, on the, the, the mandrel and it's going to draw it back into the Morse taper and lock it in. Safest way to do it. That way, it's locked. It's in place, it's locked, it's there, it's not going to move. Then I'm going to take the block and thread it right onto that. Now you see, with the draw bar in place, I can thread on this. It's going to go down nice and easy. Alright, then I'm going to bring up my tail stock. A little corrosion in here today. And I'm going to bring up the pressure on my tailstock. Now that's going to put me between centers. 
one of the perfect ways in the world to turn between points. Got it? Got it. Now we are set. We're between points. We're on the the uh, mandrel. Got my revolving center with the small dot on it. Turn on the lathe and do a little test. Where are we at? We're about 1,000, 1,200 RPMs. Speed, not critical. No. I'm going to use my ball gouge, I'm sorry, my roughing gouge, to knock those points off. Now, I'm not real good with this, and I still have to get it around. I can take it to the bandsaw and knock it down to eight side. Shield up. Ah, okay. Because this is a burl, and even if it wasn't a burl, I wouldn't want these pieces to be hitting me in the face. It's going to hit me in the face with this. I'll come close to me. A piece of that fractures off and hits you. You're going to really know about it. It's going to hurt. So shield up. Put on your bionic shield, put on your safety glasses, and protect yourself. And please, if you do get hurt, don't put a picture of the injury on Facebook. You have no idea how much that grosses me out. I've got brain damage. I've got a problem accepting some things. And I see that. i got to eliminate you because who? It's just those things. All right, I'm getting a little bit round. I'm going to swap over to a 3 8 inch bowl gouge. And I don't like the point on this. I'm going to sharpen up right now. Now, I use my Blackhawk sharpening rate. And you can see that... Fingernail gouge has got a nice grind on it. If the one that's on the top, that is the one that cuts. The bevel on the bottom doesn't cut, doesn't rub, it doesn't get in my way. I call this the Avicera grind. Why? Uh, because Eli Avicera, who's a really great teacher, was at Aramont in 2007, and I went to a class with him. <coughs> And in watching him, he had taken that back off that tool. And I couldn't figure out why. After watching him work it a little bit, a little bit I realized all that steel behind it, that doesn't cut. It just supports. So I can reduce my support a little bit and get better cuts, more turns. All right. Got right into this. I'm going to do some basic shaping. Shield up. My tool rest. It's too hot. You notice I shut the length off to move it. <clears throat> I talk about this sometimes. This is a gouge. If you juke it in there, it will cut. But what's coming off for chunks. If I turn it over, roll it in. Look at the shavings coming off. I want you to just look at the shavings coming off. Different character. Different work. Now this isn't split, see it? That's not round, why right? This is a 3-8 inch Ellsworth pipe gouge. I had to hang up the, or stop the tape to answer the phone. I always answer the phone, and I don't want to have you waiting on me, and we do the call back and forth thing. Sometimes I just have to stop and get to it. That was one of my 12th or 13th calls today about the people who don't save me so much money on my credit cards and, and home loans and car insurance and all that. And I, I don't know how to explain to these people. I don't have credit cards. I get the cheapest home insurance around, and I don't need any help with the cars. Quit calling me, for God's sakes. All right, I'm going to go to my parting tool. This is a shop-made parting tool. This is made out of a DeWalt blade for a Sawzall. And now you get out here where you can see it. DeWalt blade. I've got a, a, a YouTube on this. 
simple to make. Shield up. Clean up that a little bit. I don't forget. As you're working with this, you may have to relocate your tool rest a little bit so you don't reach over. You reach over too much, you can get vibration. Vibrations is uh, is chatter. Chatter is ugly. So move it over, get safe. But turn the machine off before you move that, because if something goes in, something comes out. I'll put the shield. I now have it basically round. And I'm gonna move the stop button to go a little bit quicker, slowing it down. But this is very smooth. But the way I'm cutting, using that bevel to do the slice, I'm actually burnishing this wood closed. So it all has to be sanded, even though it looks really nice and really sheened. Um, I'm gonna to have to sand it, all of it. But I took the nipple off and with the nipple. This is what my wife says is, us guy turners have to have that nipple. I don't know what she means, but that's what she says. But we're gonna go ahead and shield up, clean this up. I got a little, and I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if this will go in there and get it. There it is, you see that swirl? Right there, right by my thumb? thumb. That's vibration, that's chatter. The tool was moving. Yeah, the tool was moving or the wood was moving, and it wasn't moving happy. So that's chatter. That's got to come off. How do I take it off? Very easy with slight slices. Slices. Okay? And dress this off. A little scraping. You heard it, so I gotta tell you what it is. I'm getting a vibration someplace, and the vibration is causing a chatter right here. That vibration you heard was wood bouncing. Um, it didn't cut. I didn't have a good cut going. I kept going because you see the tear outs? I don't want that. I want a nice clean cut. This is a little heavy. But be kind to me. I've been away from this machine for four years, and I'm just getting back into it. Get rid of the tool rest. Everything else is going to be done with sanding now. I've got it down, and it's down a pretty good bit. And I like it. I really do. I like that heavy shape. Now, I cleaned up the bottom using my parting tool to make it nice and flat and clean, because that everything outside this mandrel is going to show. So that has to be dressed off and finished. Don't miss finishing that, it's rather important. Then I'm gonna go get my sandpaper. I can sand some of this with my uh, orbital sander. I said some because, not all, because of the shapes and figures. But if I take my time and work at it, I can get it in there, get it done nicely. Gotta find the right paper here. There it is, I'm gonna to go to 120 right here. Why? Because I still have a little bur burnishes and a few tears. And I can't do anything about them except sand them out. So I'm going to crank her up and go right to it. Shields up. I did the 120 to 180, now to 220, and I'm now I'm getting rid of the orbital sander. They're coming in by hand. You see the dust coming off? 
and you see my paper's clean, that's a couple of things to look for. You're a beginning turner, just kind of paper's moving and there's stuff happening. If it's clogging with sawdust and fines, it's not cutting, it's burnishing. You will not get a great finish on a burnished piece. Why? Well, because due to heat and friction, yes, that science class did stick with me. Um, I can, I'm, I'm sealing the wood up and I don't want it sealed up like that. I'm going to step on over and go to 320 and I'll have this on a vacuum pad. And you, again, you can see the, the dust coming off, which means I'm smoothly sanding. Look at the, the paper. I'm not clogging the paper. Real critical. My sanding supplies come from Vince Welch. Vince's Wooden Wonders. Here's the address up on screen. Get your paper and your mandrels and all that stuff you need for sanding from a guy that knows sanding. He's not going to sell you the finest paper in the world. He's going to sell you the finest paper you need. See the little burnish? He's, what that was, a minute ago, I polished it. So I want to go back and get rid of that. Not as much pressure. See, cut it now. I can't emphasize this enough. Sanding something properly gets you a great finish. I'm going to immediately go to a CA finish. I want to play with a couple of these and I want to show you the differences. So this is a piece of barrel. We spun it, we shaped it, we sanded it to 320, and that's where I stopped. Now this is where we're going to put a, a fairly quick speed CA finish on it. Don't forget to get that bottom, because it is seen. This is a piece of blue paper towel I get from Home Depot, or Lowe's, as of who I'm talking to that day. And I rubbed a quick coat on it. What kind of time was that? 53 seconds when we got started? That looks pretty good. I'm having a little speed control problem with the lathe. And it's spinning much quicker than I'd like it to right now, but I can work with this. Work with what you have. I put a coat on a minute ago, then I came back and redid another coat. Because by the time I took my hand and got it away from this machine, that coat, I can watch it right now, it's, the U is changing on it a little bit. It's drying that fast to where I can stack another coat on top of it. So if you want one of these nuts that believe you're gonna have 20 coats on, this this is real quick to do. See, look at it move on. Right? You don't have to shut the machine off or anything. Now that was quick. I think overall I had about six or seven minutes on the whole piece. Um, I've got a couple of coats of CA on it. I'm not really convinced that this is a good final coat on this piece, but I'm going to show it to you, and then I'm going to tell you that it's not finished. Yeah, I'm showing it to you without any finish. Why? Because it's been so four years since I had a stroke, and I'm finally feeling comfortable about being back in here. Management came to check on me earlier to see if I was okay, if I'm laying on the floor gasping or anything, and I wasn't, and she was happy. And keeping management happy is important. Now, that piece has got a little dullness to it, but if I take it over, it's, it's still... Got a little stickiness to it because it's just finished off, but there's no tears, there's no tool marks, and there's no bites. It's a burl. And burls have character, and the character's coming in. It's looking cracks and crinkly things, and see all that? That's the quality of wood. God gave us that. Yeah. And it can be a branch or a twig or a stick you find on the side of the road. I had a couple of guys stop by the other day and a guy said, where do you get your wood at? And I said, normally I pick it up in the driveway, somebody drops it off. The next day there was a piece in the driveway, his card on it. He dropped it off. How nice a guy. All right, I got to start telling more people that. 
That is a bottle stopper. It uses a Ruth Niles base and the ones with the flat bottom on them that Paul came up with really cool because you can stand them on the table and show them off and sell them a little bit easier. And I'll find those. I will. I came out today and found all kinds of things I didn't know I had. Or things I had I didn't remember I had. That's kind of scary. But they tell me the brain's getting fixed and I had this to be going away. Speaking about going away, it's time for me to go away. I'm going to get back to making shavings. Get back to your shop. Thank you. And since you didn't go back to your shop, I got to remind you that SWAT, Southwest Association of Turners, is August 24, 25, and 26 in Waco, Texas, and in my opinion, the finest symposium in the entire world. Great people going to be there. It's like a family meeting or family get together with family you like. So check it out. SWATTurners.org. I'm back again because I don't want to leave things undone. Um, I took my vest off, my hat, my glasses, changing back to regular street clothes to get out of shop. Then I felt my finger. I forgot to put my safety guard glass glove on to apply to CA. So now I've got a CA protective fingertip. No big deal. Yeah. If you got a very, very, very small crack and that CA gets into it, it will whack and it ain't pretty. It can be very hurtful and it's a major digit. It ain't the major digit, but it's a major digit. So put your plastic gloves on. Or, or remind me not to forget mine. 